Hello and welcome to Coding and a Cup of Java, the first lecture, lecture one, introduction and variables. So um, first, before we get to the actual coding and the actual programming, I will have to go through some practical practical information. I know practical information can be a bit boring, but we'll have to do it anyway. So first of all, this first course, Coding and a Cup of Java, will teach about basic coding. And therefore it's aimed for people that haven't been coding before. If you have coded before, then you can just tag along anyways. But some parts might go a bit slow, just because, like I said, it's for people that haven't uh, coded anything before or even know anything at all about coding. Second of all, there will be some examinations in the end of the course that will basically be a simple assignment. Uh, you are supposed to write a program or a few programs, that depends on um, uh, the course, I guess. And uh, if you complete that, you send it to me and I correct it. And if, if everything is alright, you pass the course. If something is wrong, I'm going to give you feedback on that and send you uh, that back. The assignments will be uh, uploaded later on. They, uh, I haven't finished them yet. and. Um, you basically send them to me using the uh, assignment send-in page, which doesn't really exist yet either. But, you know, uh, a few days uh, left. Um, another thing, I won't be able to answer too many questions from the Twitch chat uh, during the lectures. Uh, in, the, in the breaks and after the lecture, I will be able to answer like all the questions. But during, during the lectures, I might answer a few. But I basically don't have time and I can't focus on the uh, chat all the time. Uh, another thing, um, well, Java is not a JavaScript. I had a question on the on the site uh, the other day, and uh, just to clear, uh, well, remove all the confusions. Those are not the same languages. They are not similar. Uh, they are not the same language. They are used for completely different things. We're going to code in Java, which is the same language that has well, it's used for Minecraft. So that's that. So that's some, some boring practical information about stuff and whatnot. And now let's go to coding. I know there's not too much to uh, watch at the moment. There will be more as soon as we get started. So coding is all about putting blocks together of, uh, of things. Like you, you use different types of codes and you put those together. So think about it um, if, you, if you play with some Lego. Uh, you have some different pieces and you need to put them together. So, so you need to know what pieces you have. You need to know what you can do together with the pieces, like how to put them together. And then you need some creativity. And finally, you also need some patience to, to build something cool. It's sort of the same with coding. You need to know the, what pieces you have, what things you can do. I will teach you those things. You need, need to know how to uh, how you can build things together, like how, how to use them together. I will show some of those things. And then you need some creativity and some patience. So what I'm trying to say is I'm going to teach you how to do things. But then you also need to practice a lot. That That's a uh, important part that I just want to... to um, uh, uh, state um, and because of that it's good to code fu fun things so so yeah so there we go now boring practical stuff some uh, introduction to coding and uh, now we need some softwares don't you think so I'm going to use something called dr. Java uh, when you code you need something some some place to uh, type your code you can use a simple text editor as notepad but it might get quite annoying it's tricky to see what's going on uh, you just have a lot of text there. Dr. Java is very simple, it's very clean, it doesn't have too much functionality and that's a good thing when you're beginning in my opinion. So it will have the core functionalities but not a lot of fancy things that you don't even know why you would even want to use and this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to show how to use that. If you use something else that's just fine. So I'm going to use Dr. Java for the two first courses, and then on the other courses when I start getting into bigger projects, when we when I start uh, modding Minecraft, I'm going to use Eclipse. But for now, start basic, and um, yeah. So you go to drjava.org if you want to download it, and depending on your system, you might want to download the JAR or the Windows app. I'm on Windows, I just download the Windows app. You, that gives you a .exe file, and then you can just run that. Um, and if you have some problems installing it, you have the quick start guide here. But it's pretty straightforward, just clicking next, 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 and then install. 
So we will edit the code there, we'll type the code there, but we also need to convert the code to the actual program. So when we type, we type it in a specific syntax that is special for, for each language. But then the computer needs to be able to run that code and therefore we have what's called the compiler to, to convert that to the actual program that you can run. So to get the uh, compiler you need the Java development kit, uh, which in, uh, you can get from Oracle's uh, uh, website. It's quite a long URL, but I will link to it on the lecture page. It will be available as soon as this uh, lecture is over. Uh, but you click here, and uh, we have here uh, Developer Kit 7 uh, U21 there. Uh, you don't need exactly that version, but that's the current one apparently. And depending on your system, you just download that. Uh, it takes a bit of uh, a few minutes, I guess, and you just click next and install it, whatever. Um, and there you go. So when you have Dr. Java or something else to edit your, your program in and then the compiler, we can get started. So for me, it's going to look something like uh, this. Oh, that's this here. So as you can see, uh, first of all, the text here is quite big and that's just because I made it big so it's going to be easier for you to uh, see. And here you can see we have the compiler compiler ready GDK Java Development Kit 7.021. So that's the one I downloaded. I have it here in the list. So if you just have one uh, compiler, it's fine. I have a few here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, if you just have one, it should be fine. If you don't have that, something has probably not been installed properly. So give it another try. Then we have here we type our code up here. That's not really code, but you type it there. And here we can have multiple files. And here we have, like you saw, the, the compiler output here. If we get any errors, we will see those there. A console where we get some output. And also this interactions pane, which, which I will come to in a bit. So like you can see, it's quite simple. Not too fa much fancy stuff. You can do quite a few things, but but you know. Um, that's why I like it as a, uh, to begin with, because it's like it's quite straightforward. But if you don't want to use it, you can use something else. And I just went to the pre pre preferences page here, uh, just because I'm, this is quite nice to have. So if you just go to display option, uh, you can then go to show all line numbers. And I recommend using that, because then then if you get an error or something like that, you will see which line it is. So, so I would recommend uh, just activating that, you get all the line numbers here. So what is this interactions thingy here. Basically what it is, is a way to type code that is not really full program. So you, it's very good for testing and getting instant feedback. So when you type a program, a normal program up here, we will have to compile it, you know, with the compiler we downloaded, and we get the program that we can run. Um, and we need to write a full program and then compile it and things like that. If we type things here, it's going to compile that behind the scenes and run it right away. So it's a very good way to get instant like feedback of what you're typing. And it's also a bit less strict, so you can do some better testing. But enough about that, let's start coding. So when you code, you want to do different... Um, type different statements. This is a statement, it's something, it, it does something. And when coding, you put all of these different statements together. Um, and that's basically your program. Statements that is going to be executed, therefore doing their functionality. And some, some statements just do things, while other statements change which statements you want to run. So you change the flow of your program. And uh, if, if I click enter now, that's going to be executed. And as you see, it printed out hello on the screen. And that's what this thing here does. System.out.println, it's going to print out a line on your screen uh, using the system's um, standard output. So, so that's just how it is. You type system.out.println, then you have a pair of parentheses here, and inside there we type what we want to print out. In the end, we use a semicolon, and you do that to say, well, this uh, statement is over, we might want to start a new one. And then we do double quotes here, start and end, to, to, to tell it that the text inside here is a string. 
A string is basically a a um, bunch of characters, a, some text. So we tell it this hello thing here. It's not some some weird command. It's not a a name for something. It's it's the text we want to print out, and then we print that out, and that's our first statement. We can also do that with, for instance, numbers. But numbers, they are not really names. Well, they can't be names like that. So we don't have to do something special. It's just a number, like so. So th that's two different statements. And of course, we can have two statements in a row, like that. I ha hit Shift, Enter to enter a new line like that, without actually executing it. And what we have now is one thing there and one thing there. And when we run this, uh, this uh, is going to be executed and this is going to be executed as well. So f first the first one and then the second one. Pretty straightforward, just from top to bottom. And uh, it says hello and then it says hello again and on different lines because we're doing print ln. And that doesn't really make too much sense. I can get the same thing again by hitting up arrow, quite handy. And I can do something like that. Or if we want to, we, we might not want to print a new line. We might not just want to print things on the same line, and we can do that as well. It's pretty straightforward. We just remove the ln in the end, which is short for line. So we just go system.r.print instead, and uh, we can do something like, and I'm lazy, I don't, I don't want to uh, uh, type all of those things. We can do something like that. But as you can see now, uh, we got hello world there, but then we got, uh, well, that thing there, because now we're supposed to enter things here. But um, we can fix that quite straightforward. We can just say it to print a line in the end like that. So it's basically going to add a new lines, line in the end. Or what we can do as well is to... Uh, go with backslash n, and that's basically going to be uh, seen as a new line, so that's another way of doing it. So so that's that, but it's a bit silly, we we print them out separately, which could be fine uh, sometimes, but um, in, in this case we might just want to put them all together and then print them out in the same command, so we can do like system.r.println like that, and then we start with double quote, and then we add them together. So we concatenate them as it's called, like this. And what that's going to do is basically just put them together in a long string. So we have it we're going to get a string here that is going to start with hello, then a space and then world. So we use pluses for that, uh, plus characters there. And that's used for addition as well. So it depends on uh, on what you have. If you have strings, like, like sequences of characters, then you're going to just put them together after each other. Like that. But that's also, also a bit silly. In, in this case we could just do like that. that. That also works. So that's about it about some basic output. So uh, you have these print ln, system.out.print ln, or just print, and we can put the strings together, we can concatenate them, and the statement is going to be run one by one. So now we might want to get some input from the user, from the user keyboard, um, because, well, these programs are just weird, they just print out what we just typed in the code, so it doesn't really do too much. But for, to do that we need to do some more advanced things that I'm not going to be able to cover just yet. They will be cover, covered later in this lecture, later in this course, or even actually in the beginning of the next course, exactly what's going on here. But, like I'm going to point out a few times, we don't need to know why we're doing it, we just <laughs> need to know what to do. Uh, at the moment, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to teach you how it works later on. But basically, what this is is, it's going. We're going to tell it where we can find this object that is called a scanner. So we tell it you, we can find you in the util, util category, utilities, and that's going to be found in the Java thingy, like that. And after that, we need to create what a scanner is, and some parts of this you will know what exactly what they are in the end of this uh, this lecture, but some things you will just have to remember that they are like that, uh, for now. There you go. So now I've basically done these two lines, and when you want uh, some user input, then you need to use these two lines. Uh, just remember those, copy them, whatever, um, 
If you don't understand them, then it's fine. So now we have something called my scanner. So that's the name of it. And then I can do uh, my scanner. So I'm referring to that scanner, whatever a scanner is. And then I do my scanner next. And then an empty uh, pair of parentheses and then a semicolon because we want to end that statement there. So all of a sudden when I ran that we got a box here and that's basically because when we do myscanner.next we're asking for some, some input from the user and therefore the program is going to freeze and wait for those things. So it's going to search in, in, in a input buffer, basically what the user have entered. But since since I haven't been able to enter anything to that buffer yet, that buffer is going to be empty and therefore it will have to ask me as a user what I want to enter to the buffer. So if I type hello here uh, and hit enter, everything the program is just going to end because the only thing I do is doing my scanner.next. So I get the next word, so I get one word, and uh, I'm not using it for anything at all. But um, then I can also print that out right away. And no, uh, if you want to uh, get the whole line, you can do so by going myscanner.nextline, a question there from the chat. Uh, print and then I can do myscanner.nextline next uh, like so and then if I run it again I'm going to the buffer is going to be empty now because we used the word hello last time and then I can type in for instance hello world there you go and it's going to print out hello so I'm looking just for the next word I'm even though the user entered two words because the user was mean or whatnot um, but I was just looking for the first one, so I got the first one and I printed that out using the print LM there. And uh, uh, now, because we just read the first thing, we um, have a, another word still in the buffer. And we will see that if we run the program again, because then we're not going to get that box where the user can enter uh, any values or whatnot, just because we have something there already that we can use. So you will have to like uh, watch out for that. If there's something in the input buffer that a user has entered al already, um, we might have some problems. We might expect something else. But like the questions uh, in the Twitch chat, you can actually read a full line. So we could do like my scanner dot next line to remove whatever we have there but it's going to be a bit tricky because if we don't have anything there we're going to uh, well we won't want the user to uh, to actually uh, enter something when we just wanted to clear it so you can make sure that the buffer is uh, is empty but I'm not going to go through uh, that right now I'm going to continue with with uh, with how to use it right and we can also do something else here. Instead of next for next word, we can do my scanner dot next int. So there we're going to ask for the next integer from the user, like that. And uh, I spelled it wrong. As you can see, I typed my scanner with a lowercase s, and that's not the same thing as my scanner with an uppercase s. So therefore, it's going to say, "All right, I don't know. You're trying to refer to something called my scanner, but it it doesn't exist." So the thing that does exist is the my scanner with an uppercase s. So you need to make sure that you're capitalizing it properly. Those things might cause a bit of a problem. There you go. So now uh, uh, it's asking us for a integer instead. Well, we we're asking the user for an integer, and if I type five, that's going to print, be printed out. But there's we're not telling the user at all that we're looking for an integer. So the user might let's say, "All oh, right, hello," and then it's going to crash. So it might be a good thing to uh, tell the user what uh, what it's supposed to enter. And uh, we can also do some like more advanced things, not very much advanced things, but we can do something like that. So we used the plus before to concatenate strings, but since we're asking for integers, we're going to use it as addition, as I've said earlier. And uh, basically, we're asking for one integer there 
and we're asking for one integer there, we're going to add those together uh, in this whole thing here. This whole thing is, is called an expression, where we're basically getting values and evaluating them together, and then we use that the, the result of that expression to, to print it out. Like we've done before, just a bit more advanced, we have two integers that we sum together. Uh, and what did I do now? Uh, all right, yeah. So the problem is now that check that out. It's the same error uh, like here. I have the same error twice. The thing is, this part here, uh, the hello there, it's still in the buffer because we didn't we we crashed the last time. So it's still in the buffer, and we're going to get this error no matter how many times we ask if we ask for an integer because well, there's there's a a string in the buffer, so that's the wrong type. We can't convert hello to like five. That doesn't really work. So what I will have to do now is to clear that. And since I know it's just one word, I can just do my scanner dot next. And that now we're going to get that. We're not going to use it for anything. And uh, up arrow twice to get that again. And now we can do this properly. So if I then enter four and five, for instance, like that, it's going to print out nine. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, integers are numbers, and string is a text. A so string is just a sequence of characters, while an integer is an integer, which is an English word. It's basically a number, any number, without any decimals. So it's like 5 and 2 and minus 500, but it's not 2.5. So we can do something like that, but this program is like we've seen, a bit silly. The user don't know what to enter. We have like a lot of crashes there because the user entered something else. And we, we can basically just tell the user what to do. So let's write a very, very basic program here. So system.add print ln like this. And then please enter two. Let's go with two integers. The next part of this lecture is going to cover some of the basic, uh, well, the primitive types in Java. So stand by for that. And yes, some instructions here, but I will also show why this way, uh, well, this program I'm writing is a bit weird. And I can do just yes, print out the result here. My scanner dot next int. Well, not the result, but we calculate the result and, and print it out. Here we go. So now I have three statements. The first one is going to print that out. Please enter two integers. The second one is going to print out the sum of the integers is. And the third one is going to ask for two integers, sum them together and print them out. But you will see that this is a bit of a problem. It's going to say, please enter two integers. And then it's going to say the sum of the integers is. Then we're going to be allowed to enter things in the box there. And um, yeah, it's going to look a bit weird. Basically, we, it's going to work. So if I go uh, 7 and 8, it's going to add those together 15. But the output here is just very, very odd. Please enter two integers, some of the integers is, and then we're going to allow it to enter. So it might be quite, uh, it m might make quite a lot of sense because we're printing this out here before. But a one would think that, well, if we do it like this, maybe it works, but it's not going to work because what we're doing now, well, they, it looks good in the beginning. It it's tells us, well, uh, enter two integers, and it says so there. Then we're going to ask for those and print those out. So if I go like uh, 10 and, and 32, and then it's going to say 42, and then afterwards the sum of the integers is. So we can't really get this to work properly in, in some way. Um, it's it's always going to ask uh, it um, before that. We we can solve it in 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 actually a we can concatenate some strings with some integers in a in a bit of a weird way. But that would work. But we will see another possible solution later on in this lecture, which is more straightforward in my opinion. But now we've come to uh, the part where. I'm going to show you uh, how to write a proper program. So instead of just typing having the statements here. We're going to use the same statements, but we're going to use them up here instead. And I'm just going to reset that, that so we don't, we don't need that. So we'll go reset interactions. There we go. And now it's going, just going to reset that. Nothing, nothing special. That's a bit slow. There you go. 
And now, when we start writing a program, like we when we use the scanner, we are going to use things that we are not going to learn for quite some time. Uh, some things are not even going to be a part of this course, but the second course. But I'm just going to type it out and tell you what parts you need to know about and what parts you just need to type and just live with it. So now we go example program. Uh, that's that's a good name. So this is the name of our program. We do public class and then the name of our program. Then we do one of these curvy brackets and in the end of our program we do another curvy bracket. So between these two brackets, the opening one and the closing one, that's our program basically. Then we do public static void void main like that and then we do um, string uh, these uh, square brackets and then args like that and then another pair of these curvy brackets. So th there are two things you need to know at the moment. Here's our name of the program and here, here goes our code. Whatever we type there is going to be executed when we start our program. There are a few things you can learn about these things but th like I said those are not uh, part of this lecture or oh, some parts are not even part of this course. So now uh, we can start typing our program. We can do the same thing that we did before. So system dot out dot print ln to print out a line and I would go please enter two integers like that. Um, and then I'm going to create a uh, scanner like this to oops not a space there, you can't have a space there. Uh, my scanner and uh, new scanner system dot n like that. And then we're going to uh, print out. Uh, so we're going to have the same prob problem now uh, with uh, when the, this text is going to be printed out. So the sum of the integers is like that. And then we're going to read that and uh, and uh, basically print it all out. So my scanner dot next end plus my scanner dot next end. So as you can see, it's I can't really fit all the code on the screen. That's just because it's quite big. So I can do that, and we get some more space. Um, and it's it's just because it's supposed to be easier for you to see. So I think uh, this is the best way to do it. So now if I compile it and run it, I'm going to get an error. But more to that in a bit. So we have an example program here, and that's our name. And in Java, actually, we have to save the file as example program Java. If we don't, we can't run the program. So that's just how it is. You you can't name your program up here something and then name the file something else. It's not going to work. And si since Doctor Java knows this, it's going to suggest that you name it the same thing. Uh, uh, as you have typed here. So that's why it says example program here already. And it's going to add the .java on its own, so we don't have to bother about that. And also, um, we, we, well, we, it's going to suggest us to save it here, but we can save it wherever. And then we hit save, and I have an example program already, which looks sort of the same here, so I'm just going to overwrite that. And if that behaves. And it compiled it as well, because I hit compile. And if I open up the compiler output now, we can see that we have a lot of errors. Oh, well, two. It's complaining about it can't really find something called a scanner. And why is why can't we find that? Well, we've forgotten about something. We're not telling it where we can find the scanner. This import line that I was talking about earlier. And import lines, they go up here. So if you want to import things, you do them up here. And that's just how it is. So three things you will have to learn about these programs, how, where, like what, what you need to uh, learn from this, is here we go with all the imports. Up here, uh, on top of everything, we go with imports. Here we, we put our name, and here we write our code. All the other things you just need to copy and put there, and just accept that that's how it works. So now we can hit compile again, and this time it's working. So compilation completed. Nice. And now we can hit run here, and it's going to run the program. And it's going to say, please enter, 
into two integers like before. The sum of the integers is, and now we can do exactly the same thing as we did before, and not like that. I'm just tired. Uh, or not concentrated. So 3 and 2 there, we get a 5, like, just like before. So we basically run the program here, we saved it, and uh, that's pretty nice. But but it's a few things missing here. For for the for first, it's just a lot of code here. We might want to split it up a bit. So I'm going to split it up like that. So empty lines doesn't really matter, because everything is controlled uh, by by the characters and their, the symbols. So we start here, this main thing or whatever that is, and end it here. It, we don't we don't care about exactly where things are written, and uh, we don't really care about spaces here because well we have semicolons here to define where something starts and where something ends, uh, and even more we don't care about if something looks like this. It's still going to work, but it's just a matter of uh, having things so it's nice to get a good overlook of it. Because if we don't get a good overlook, it's going to be tricky to uh, debug it, to find errors in your code. And it's also going to be tricky to add new features and see where you're going to add new features. A pretty nice thing to do in Dr. Java is if you select some code, for instance there, and hit tab, it's going to align it properly. Uh, as properly as, as it imagines. So if, if you have some bugs in your code, some syntax issues, it might not realize what you, you're supposed to do like how, how you want it to be. But now since my code is alright, uh, it's just going to assume that if I hit tab, it's, I want it to be aligned like this. And this is a quite simple program, so we don't, might not need them, but it's always good to add some comments. Comments start with, starts with a double slash, and what those are are basically a way for you to comment your own code, like what is uh, what is this part doing here, um, and why have I added this? So it's not a part of the code, so it doesn't really do anything, it's just for you to be able to see um, what you've done, why you've done it, why you have derped so, lo uh, so much, or whatever. So I can type here, like, uh, we need a scanner to uh, get some uh, user input, like that. And maybe add down here, um, uh, print out the result, something like that. So, should we just tell uh, ourselves what it does? The user won't be able to see those at all. It's it's just for for ourselves as coders. And I know it might feel a bit ridiculous. You know what your code is. You've just done it. But well, if you get back to the code a few months later, a few weeks later, even a few days later, you might not know what you've done. Or if someone else is going to read your code, they might not get at all what you're thinking. Um, and it's just a good thing to do. Type comments, not too much, but just, just some of you have some advanced parts of the code or have, have, uh, have something you'd like to comment about, do so. But these are not the only comments we can make. We can make multi-line comments. So we start those with a slash and then a star, and then we can end them with a star and a slash in the other order. As you can see here, Dr. Java added stars here. I don't know why Dr. Java thinks it's fancy with some extra stars. Those are not required. So then we can type something like, uh, this is a multi-line comment, which uh, we're using for no apparent Parent, uh, parent reason, something like that. And those are also a bit handy because we can tell them where they end. We can also use them, for instance, in the middle of uh, of a statement, for instance. So I don't recommend you doing this because it doesn't make any sense. But just to show it, uh, it might come in handy in other scenarios. But here it's just weird. So I can do. Uh, my scan the next in there, and then I can type hello, I'm annoying, like that. And it's still going to work because we tell it that the comment starts here and the comment ends here. And it's very easy to see because in most uh, pro proper editors uh, they are, are another color. So we have another color for, for, for these ones here, the comments, and then we have another color here for the strings. So it's pretty easy to see if we did a mistake. For instance, if I forgot to double quote in the end, it's going to make these ones red, red as well. If I forgot this ending bracket here, it's going to make everything green because it assumes that everything is a big comment. So 
colors do help you a bit. So if you're colorblind, then well, you can you can handle it anyways. But but it's quite handy. And um, now we have these comments, but we can still hit compile because they don't do anything at all and we can run it once again like this. We still have this uh, weird program where it says the sum of the integers is and then uh, it's going to allow us to type the result afterwards. Yeah, that's also true, a comment from the the uh, the Twitch chat. You can like, alright, we don't need the scanner at the moment so why can you just comment it out. This of course is going to give us errors because all of a sudden this scanner here doesn't exist. It's just a comment. We don't care about it. Uh, so uh, it's going to give give us an error. We don't really know what this my scanner you're talking about is. So so yeah, that's a possibility. But um, just to remove code temporarily, and then you can add it later on again. Rightio. Um, now we can compile that, and and uh, we can, uh, yeah, and and that's basically going to work like that. So we have multi-line comments. We have statements here that it's going to run one by one. So that's going to run, that's going to run, and then that's going to run this one here. Sorry, the mouse doesn't actually show up on XSplit. So we have that one, we have that one, and that one, and this one here. So they are going to be run one by one. The comments are completely going to uh, being completely ignored, as will the spaces, uh, the empty lines here, and. Um, then, then everything is going to uh, be executed one by one. It's going to print out the things on the screen, uh, screen and uh, that's our program. A very simple, very basic program. And now I've been talking a bit faster than the plan, so I have nine minutes to go. Do you guys have any questions of this first lecture, uh, this first part of the lecture? There will be four to five minutes more uh, after the break where we will talk about variables and... Uh, and uh, uh, arithmetical operators and a few other tricks as well. But but um, yeah. Um, well, while I'm actually having this extra time, I can show you a bit about the uh, the scanner. Uh, so if we create the scanner here, import Java dot util dot scanner. So I'm back in the interactions to be able to show you some a few things here, and then um, we create the scanner here. Scanner my scanner um, scanner uh, equals new scanner. So what is this actually doing? Like this. So I'm going to take a closer look in this. Uh, not too much. We're going to learn a bit more about variables, and that's sort of what we have here. Um, so we have a scanner here with a name sca scanner, and we're operating on the standard input, and that's the input we uh, we uh, well the basic input, the keyboard, the standard input, and th as you can see, that looks a bit like when we're printing things out. There we go with system dot out, which is our standard output. Uh, so it just like like we're creating something that we are using to. Uh, to get the standard input, and then we can use the standard output to print things out. There you go. So, so it's basically just the standard things. But then you can work with files and and databases and network networking and everything. And then you're not using the system standard out and in. So, so that's why you need to refer to the system dot out and system dot in instead of just doing like print line. go down a line. I can hit shift enter to go down here without executing a line and I can also hit arrow up to go like that. So this is about it for this lecture. I'm going to, well this part of the lecture, I'm going to introduce what we're going to do next and what we're going to use, use next are variables, a way for us to store data and we're also going to use that in the example program I had to improve that. And this is a very simple example of how we can use a variable. And uh, I'm not going to discuss what it does now. That's the next part of the lecture. So 
this is going to print out 5, but that's about it. I'll see you after the, the break. Uh, it will be about 20 minutes now, because I finished a bit earlier. So, in about 20 minutes, I'm going to continue for 5 more minutes about variables. So, see you then.